Joe's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today's video is about the three year review on the 52 inch Husky Toolbox. That's right, it's been three years since I purchased this toolbox. It's hard to believe, it just seems like it was just a month or so ago. But when I was in the market for toolboxes, I knew I wanted something big, at least 52 or 56 inches wide, and I knew I wanted something tall uh, that was gonna fit in the area that I had it for right here. And so when I got on the internet and started looking around, I was quite surprised of the prices of these toolboxes, starting at $2,000, going up as much as six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000, which was way out of the realm of my budget, that's for sure. Until I come across this one right here. The Husky 52-inch toolbox founded at the Home Depot, $598. More like my budget, that's for sure. It seemed like a nice toolbox, so I went ahead and purchased it and I'm glad I did. So this thing fits perfectly right where I need to, and I've made a couple of adjustments to it. Uh, I will tell you about those right now. You can see that this thing came with a fold down top, uh, a locking top, of course, and it has this nice platform up on the top area. Well, I don't need that folding down top, so I took that off uh, and got rid of it. I've provided some lighting up underneath here to light this area up for I can, so it's easy access for me to, to see what I have up here. Now up here I have the tools that I most commonly use. Tape measures, pens, pencils, uh, some cutting material, um, impact driver tools, some fasteners, and of course drill bits. Drill bits are, are what I go to daily. And you know, you want these things that you access daily. Pens, pencils, tape measures, all this stuff. Easy to get to and at a, and at a good level it's easy to access. And that's what I've done here. And it provides 16 inches by 48 inches is a lot of area to put a lot of things that you use most commonly that you don't want to have in the drawers all the time. So that works out really good for me. The next thing is, you do sacrifice a little bit uh, money-wise from the $2,000 to the seven or $8,000 toolboxes in this way. Uh, the drawers, the drawers are only 16 inches deep, but they are full extension. And for me, 16 inches is a lot of space to put just about everything that I need to do uh, put in it without any problems. The other ones go 18, 20, 22 inches deep, and that's fine, but Hey, for the amount of money that I saved, $598 versus four or $5,000, I, I can handle a couple of inches of space, that's for sure. So let's move in, take a closer look. Um, but before we do that, I want to talk about a couple of comments that people have had in the past uh, over this toolbox. Uh, one of them, or a couple of them, are saying that the casters are no good, it doesn't roll well, you get a lot of weight in it, and and they're, they're, they're uneven, they're flat. Well, you know, maybe that's the case, and, and if so, uh, sorry to hear about that, but for me, I don't care. This thing has moved into the spot right here, will never move again until I move, actually, and it works out really good. However, the casters themselves look to be pretty heavy duty. They're at least five inches in diameter. They look fairly solid, but I don't really know the quality of that. The other thing is they, they were talking about the drawer glides. The drawer glides, um, were binding, pinching, weren't working smoothly. Uh, ball bearings were coming out. And, and maybe that's the case uh, with them. Um, I'm sure that you can't, every box is not built absolutely perfect. I feel pretty lucky then because this box is absolutely perfect. There is no issues. Every drawer works perfectly good. Every drawer opens and closes very smoothly. There is one issue with the box that I have, and that is this drawer right here. Now this is the biggest drawer in the toolbox. So it's 48 inches, uh, three and a half inches deep. Now you would think that if you were a manufacturer of a toolbox, that this is going to be a drawer that's going to hold a lot of weight. And in fact it is. This drawer holds the most weight out of, out of everything that I have in this toolbox. It has one drawer glide on each side. And to me, that's a little flimsy. So when you open this drawer, it's a little wobbly coming open, but again, a 16 inch full extension allows you to get uh, gain good access. This is where I have all my sockets. This is a quarter three eighths, half inch drive and full metric and standard. And I got some box and end wrenches on the side and all the accessories that go with it inside here. So that accounts for a lot of weight. 
So when I open, I know I'm, I'm aware of that. So when I open and close this drawer, you know, I just be sure that I, I do it uh, with care, and I'm not just ripping it open and ripping it close. So that is the only issue. You can see that it kind of wobbles a little bit when it comes open and close. But again, I've had it for three years. I get in it all the time. I haven't had any issues. So let me move you in. We'll take a look. At, we'll take a look at some of the drawers on this thing and see uh, how well it's built, and we'll see how we got things organized. All right, so first up is the screwdriver drawer. Uh, now the screwdriver drawer I chose to, uh, to put near the top of the box because these are the tools that, I like putting the tools near the top of the box in the drawers. These are the tools that, that require access more so than others. So, you know, pliers, screwdrivers, Allen wrenches, miscellaneous stuff up here on the top part of this uh, toolbox. These are the tools that you frequent the most. So this is again a 16 inch, uh, uh, fully extendable drawer. It has good access to everything. And I've put this little rubber coating on the bottom of all the drawers, but by the way, it was included with the box itself. I just had to uh, cut them out to put it in, which I thought was pretty cool as well. And this works out really good for me. You know, I sacrificed the 16 inches versus the 20 or 22. Well, this screwdriver right here might be 20 or 22 inches long. That's the only one that doesn't fit in here lengthwise. I happen to have a couple of them, but you know what? Putting them sideways isn't killing anything. Everything still works really good. Moving on down is the plier drawer. Uh, now the plier drawer, again, you want stuff up here that you, you don't have to bend down that you can frequently get to. And these two drawers, screw, screwdrivers, pliers, um, up near the top of the box, uh, easy access, uh, works really good. And you can see how smooth you know, this is how smooth these drawers work. I, I, I don't have any issues. It's very easy to pull out, very easy to retract. Pretty cool. I'm moving down to the bottom third drawer of the top part of this box right here. Um, I have miscellaneous drill bits. I've got punches and uh, stuff, the drill drivers, attachments, and of course, all the stuff right here. Um, some burrs over here and bigger drill bits and stuff. This has just has worked out really good for me. This is a good little home, a good little place. Uh, for this stuff, I get in here regularly uh, for for all kinds of stuff like this, and you know, again, uh, it makes it for easy access and full extension drawers for the bigger, longer bits in the back. Pretty cool. Okay, so for the the top drawer on the right hand side of the upper part of the box, I call this my junk drawer. Now, this is a drawer that it, it is on top that carries all the small miscellaneous little things that you may or may not need. Little things, X-Acto knives, just all the little tools uh, that, that forever are floating around and don't know where to, where to put things. Uh, this thing's worked out really good. I've got all these, all these little small hand tools that are, that are in here. Uh, you know, paint can openers, the small little razor blades, just miscellaneous things that you use all the time. I call it the junk drawer. I'm in this drawer almost every day and getting something or other out of this drawer. But again, up on the upper level where it's easy to access. The next drawer down is the Allen wrench drawer. Uh, you know, I have all the Allen wrenches. I got everything that I need, metric, standard, uh, all different sizes, long ones, short ones. And this makes a good little drawer, uh, good access for this drawer right in here. This drawer down here is miscellaneous wrenches. Now, uh, these are wrenches that I've, I've kept for, for years and years and years, and they're, and they're from different toolboxes randomly or different toolkits that I've purchased or have gotten over the years. And so I just throw them in here. I have metric on this side, and I have standard on this side, and I've got some older wrenches in the back back here uh, that I've collected miscellaneous uh, garage sales. Now, there's some pretty cool stuff back in here. So this is just a, a drawer. When I, when I need wrenches, I go to this one right here. However, I do have another one I'm going to show you here in a minute that I have all my, my, my other, uh, other quality stuff in. So that's pretty easy, pretty to access. And now let's take a look at down here. Okay, so this brings us to the middle long drawer. Three and a half inches deep, 48 inches long on a single glide. Probably the heaviest heaviest drawer I have in the box on the single glide. But if you just pull it out nice and easily, everything works out really good. And this is where I keep all my sockets right here. Uh, again, 
uh, three eighths, a uh, quarter inch, three eighths, half inch in American and standard. All the accessories that go with it here and some box and wrenches, metric and standard on each side. Uh, works out really good. It is a heavy box. I just wish this one had dual drawer guides on it, but that's okay. I'm not, that's not really hurting me too bad. Okay, so this brings us to the bottom half of the box right here. We're going to go through these drawers fairly quickly because this is the, I want to say, less interesting stuff that you may have in the toolbox. Uh, I keep them. And the lower the drawers go, um, the less important things I put in there that I the more frequently, I don't, I should say, I don't get to uh, very often. Uh, this here is, is my wrench drawer. Now, even though I had another drawer up here that I 99.99% of the time use, uh, this just happens to be the sets, the full sets of everything that I've had, and I keep them organized in this drawer right here. Uh, I don't get to it very often. Uh, I use mostly everything out of that drawer because it is higher and they're easy to access. But that's just this one here. This one right here is just hammers and miscellaneous layout tools. And as you can see, the lower you go down, the less interesting things are. This is stuff that uh, my tap and die, some miscellaneous drills, some torque wrenches, calipers and stuff that I don't use very often. And then down here I have a pop rivet drawer. Not very often do I get into the pop rivet drawer. This is why it's so low. And then down here uh, wire brushes, your miscellaneous stuff. Very rarely do I get into this. I have, I have wire brushes and stuff in, in different locations. It's easier to access. This is just all the new stuff. And then the bottom drawer very rarely get in here. This is just for the bigger stuff that I have. Um, it's just a good drawer to hold all that stuff. We'll quickly take a look at the other side over there and we'll wrap this video up. All right, so in this drawer right here, uh, this is where I keep all my files and chisels. And uh, again, it's in a position that I get to pretty regularly. Uh, so this is a good, a good place for this one right here. And then down here, crescent wrenches. I mean, who doesn't need crescent wrenches, right? I must have 20 or 30 crescent wrenches in here, <clears throat> all different sizes. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. Works out really good for me, and uh, it's just a good place for them. Moving on down, just some, uh, I got some basic chisels and some scrapers down here. Like I said, the lower you get, the less you use these drawers. Uh, tin snips, you know, wire cutters, bolt cutters, a little small pipe wrenches and stuff that very rarely gets used. And the bottom drawer is air tools. Uh, I keep my air tools and miscellaneous stuff down there. Don't get down there very often. Okay, there it is. Uh, the three year review for the Husky Toolbox. Uh, and I gotta say, for me, uh, it was the right choice. You know, I can justify spending six hundred dollars on a toolbox versus three, four, five thousand, and sacrifice a couple of things. Uh, the sixteen-inch drawers uh, instead of eighteen, twenty, or twenty-two. And yeah, my only beef is the big drawer having one uh, glide on each end. But you know what? I can live with that. That's not a problem. So all in all, uh, this thing has worked out perfectly. It works just as good today as it did three years ago when I put it together. I'm very happy with it. If you guys are looking for a very inexpensive but very large, nice toolbox, uh, you might want to give the Husky toolbox a look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe for more. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.